I made one small change to my forehand technique and I have been able to crush them ever since. Here's what I did. Before we get to the secret that has transformed my forehand, we have to start with your feet. The feet are one of the most important aspects of every shot in tennis. A super common mistake that I see for a lot of my students at the beginning, intermediate, and even some at the advanced level is people think, look, I have a ball that's really far away. I need to run really far and I need to take really big steps in order to get there quickly. This is not accurate. Instead, you need to be taking as many small steps as you can in between each shot. The primary reason why you should focus on taking short, small steps to get to that next shot, to get to that next ball, is because you need to make sure that once you get there, you are on balance and set up for that next shot. If you take a big, big step between each different shot, you're gonna be off balance and still in movement once you actually get to that next position. The second phase of the forehand is the unit turn making sure as soon as they hit that ball and you know which side it's going to that you are immediately getting your shoulders turned with forehand or backhand but specifically for your forehand making sure that your left shoulder or even more is facing towards the opposite side of the court by doing this you ensure that you're able to build up momentum into your shot by taking your racket first back and then down and then forward you're building up that momentum so you're able to get extra power in your next shot third and this is the secret sauce that I promised you at the very beginning of this video. As soon as you've made your unit turn, don't wait. Don't stay in that unit turn position. Immediately go down to pet the dog or dribble the basketball or whatever, whatever word picture you like to use. But don't wait. And the reason to immediately go down is this. If you are waiting here and you're just waiting for your next shot in this position, all you have to do is swing forward instead of being here and then going down and swinging forward on the last few milliseconds when the ball is getting to you. By being down there already, you're able to save yourself time and you only have to swing forward. This is gonna enable you to get more extension into your next shot and thus more power. Number four, once you've ensured that you've gotten that secret sauce, so you've placed that racket down very early, the next most important part of your swing is to ensure that your racket is fully extended when you're making contact. And this is the number one reason why you should do this. It's a basic physics law. Torque equals force times distance. So force in a tennis swing is how fast your racket is moving. Distance is the length from your shoulder all the way down to the center of the racket where the ball is making contact. So the further away that is, the more power you're gonna be able to get. The greater you're gonna be able to increase that end equation of torque based on increasing your force, so how fast you're swinging, and then most importantly, increasing your distance, how far you are extending the racket. Carlos Alcaraz does one of the best jobs of this on the entire tour, and it's why he's able to crush his forehands so successfully. Five, after you've ensured that you're making that contact way out in front, next, you need to make sure that you're getting good shoulder rotation into that shot. That rotation is another huge factor of what's generating your power. So you should start with your left shoulder facing the opposite side of the court, or maybe even your back. And then as you hit, you rotate through your shot all the way. Professionals do a phenomenal job of this, and this is what enables them to get so much more power on their shots. Finally, and number six, make sure that you are always falling through over your shoulder. This is one of the things that all the top pros have in common. Even Daniel Medvedev, who has a very flat forehand, still, if you watch him in slow motion, he's following through over his shoulder each time to enable him to get that top spin, to get that spin over the ball, which is gonna make sure that it comes in and it's a very consistent shot. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe. You can check out my other video here of the do's and don'ts of hitting a backboard. And please leave a comment down below and let me know what you're gonna do next time you're hitting forehand.